Welcome back to this action RPG tutorial. Today we're going to be learning how to create pots that the hero can pick up and throw. The first thing we're going to want to do is to get a pot sprite. The tile set that I showed last time uh, has uh, one of these sprites as part of it, but of course we don't want the whole tile set, so let's create a slice by making an atlas texture. I'm going to start by creating a folder which I will call props which will hold things such as the pot for the character to interact with. And I'm going to create a new resource, which is going to be an atlas texture. We're going to call it pot. And then what we're going to do is we're going to drag the tile set into here. Uh, we're going to zoom in. Here's the region that we want, uh, these pot sprites. Let's, to make things simpler, let's use grid snap with a step size of 16 by 16. And then we can just drag and select these two pots as our atlas. Now that we have the sprite, we should create the scene. So I'm going to create a scene called pot, and we're going to make it a static body, 2D. Um, and the reason that it's a static body is because if the hero collides with the pot, um, we don't want the pot to move. And if it were a kinematic body, um, they move slightly uh, in collisions. So let's add a sprite. And the sprite will, of course, be our new texture and we only want one of them so there's two horizontal frames we're just using frame zero but it also needs a collider so add collision shape 2d you could just make it a big rectangle but i'm actually going to make it a circle and have it be roughly the size of the sprite let's think about collision layers for a moment right now of course the sprite is on the terrain layer and we only have terrain and pits but it's not really uh, terrain in fact, there are two qualities of the pot that we may want to consider. One is that it's an obstacle um, that the player will collide with and not be able to move. And the other is that it's something the player can interact with. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into project settings, we're going to go down to the layers, and we're going to create two new layers. We're going to have a layer called obstacles. Um, the idea being these are things that block the player's path. Uh, and then we'll have one called interactable or interactables, plural, and that's things the player can interact with. And then the pot will inhabit both of those layers. In order to make sure that the player can actually collide with the pot, let's go to the hero. Um, I don't think we've actually, yeah, we haven't done anything to the hero's collision layer yet. Obviously the player is not part of the terrain. The player is not an obstacle or an interactable, but we do want the player to collide with obstacles. If we set the mask uh, of a kinematic body 2D to a layer, that means that it will collide with that layer and not be able to move through it. All right, and I'm going to add a pot to our scene. So instance a pot, and I will just move the pot over to, let's say here. And we are, uh, as you can see, unable to move past the pot. Of course, obviously we want the hero to be able to pick up the pot. So let's go to the hero and we're going to create a Raycast 2D. Raycast 2D is basically an arrow that can be used to return the first thing that it collides with provided that the mask matches up. So this particular one is going to be used to detect interactable objects. So we'll set the Raycast 2D's mask to interactables and we will call it interactable detector. And its purpose is just to detect if there's an interactable in front of us. Of course, right now it's facing down, but we want it to face in whatever direction the hero is facing. You can see that the cast two currently starts, actually it starts a little bit up in the middle of the hero. I think we want it probably start at the hero's feet, the same place the shadow is. We'll shorten the length of the vector to eight, so it can only detect uh, eight pixels out from that point. And we also want to check enabled so that it's in use. Going into the hero's code, uh, whenever we set the texture, so changing the facing, we are also going to update the uh, Raycast 2D. Let's just create an on ready var so that we don't have to use the dollar sign every time. On ready var interactable detector equals interactable detector. All right, and now when we, whenever we change the facing, we are going to say interactable detector dot cast two equals facing times eight. So facing, of course, is a unit vector. You multiply that by eight and you get a vector that is eight pixels long. Now the hero needs an interact function. So we will call this interact. 
And what this will do is we will have the interactable detector figure out if there's something in range, and then we will call a method on whatever it finds. So we'll say target equals interactable detector for a Raycast 2D. You can get whatever it's colliding with using the method get collider. So let's go look at this function really quick. So Raycast 2D get collider uh, returns the first object the ray intersects or null if no object is intersecting the ray. Uh, now, obviously, if it's null, we don't want to do anything. So let's say if target is not null, then we will want to call a method on the target. And let's just use a common name that we can implement in all of the objects with which we can interact. Let's call it uh, interacted. So target dot interacted. And then we'll pass the hero as an argument to that uh, in case that's necessary, which um, in fact it will be for picking up a pot. Now, you might be wondering, well, what if the target doesn't have the interacted method? Shouldn't we uh, put in something to guard against that? And you, are, you would be partially right, except that the interactable detector is only looking on the interactables layer. And presumably, if we're going to add something to that layer, we should probably give it this method. And if it doesn't have that method, then it shouldn't be on that layer. Um, so this is a case where um, by not adding a check for that, we can make sure that it fails loudly because it tries to call a function that doesn't exist on the target. So I'm not going to guard this at all. We will assume that if there is a target, it will have this method. And of course, having said that, let's make sure that the pot actually does have this method. So I'm going to attach a script to the pot. And obviously, it's going to need the function interacted, which is always called with the hero as an argument. And we'll just type this as node 2D so that we get some possibly helpful auto complete options here. So I think the way that you interact with a pot is that you pick it up. So if the hero tries to interact with the pot, we're going to call hero dot pick up self and uh, pick up is a function that uh, doesn't actually exist yet. So let's create it. So pick up uh, and then object, which will give node 2D. So the hero should probably only be able to carry one object at a time which naturally suggests that we should have a variable to store that object. Carried object equals null. And then when we pick up an object, if carried object is null, then we will set carry ob carried object to that object. And we will also call a method on that object because now that we've picked it up, we need to resolve whatever has to be done when it's picked up. We will say carried object dot picked up. Back to the pot picked up. And I think there are a few things we want to do here. Primarily, I think we should have an animation where the pot is lifted into the air. So we are going to create an animation player and we will add an animation called picked up. And the effect of this animation will be to lift the pot's sprite into the air. So transform, add that as a track, and we'll say it takes, uh, let's just go 0.5 seconds to pick up the pot. And at the end of that 0.5 seconds, the Y coordinate will be, let's say, minus 12. So just like that. So when the pot is picked up, we will have the animation player play that animation. Let's call the animation Sprite Animator. We'll create an on ready var to store it. Sprite Animator. So when picked up, Sprite Animator will play picked up. Actually, you know what? Let's let's not call this, let's call this carry animator, not sprite animator. I think that's a bit more descriptive. Now, jumping back to the hero, if the hero is carrying an object, that object should probably be centered on the hero and should move around with them. So, what we're going to do is, in physics process, we are going to set the position of the carried pot to be the same as the hero's position. So, if carried object is not null, then carried object dot position equals the hero's position. And then the last thing we need to do, uh, of course, is we need a key that will make the hero uh, actually interact with stuff. So if input dot is key pressed, um, let's just map this to C for now. If we press the C key, then hero dot interact. All right, so here we are. And 
Okay, uh, why is this happening? Well, it's very simple. If we go and look at the pot uh, and its collider, it is still an obstacle, which means that uh, if it collides with the hero, it's going to displace the hero. And uh, now what, what we're doing in the hero's code is we're saying, okay, we're going to move the pot to the hero's position every physics frame. So you're going to get some weird occurrences there. But there's an easy way to fix this, which is that uh, when we pick up the pot, so in the pot's picked up animator, we can just disable the uh, collider. Um, on the picked up animation, I'm going to add a layer to this. And I think probably um, just the instant you pick it up, we're going to have the animator disable both the obstacles and interactables layer because it's not an obstacle while you're holding it. Um, and it's not something you can interact with while you're holding it because you can only interact with things that are in front of you. Okay, and now we are able to carry the pot around successfully. Now, if we jump, the pot is not jumping with us because the pot is tied to the hero root node position, not to the position of the sprite, which is maybe something we want to change. So what we can do is carried object dot global position equals hero sprite dot global position. Uh, and the reason we have to use global position instead of position is because the position of the hero sprite is given relative to the hero, uh, where, whereas the hero's position is given relative to the room. And so now, uh, when we jump, the pot jumps with us. And actually, I think I would rather this be below the hero in the order here, so that it appears in front of the hero instead of behind the hero. Okay, so now we know how to pick up the pot. What about throwing it? First of all, um, I think we probably want to use the same interact button to throw the pot uh, as to pick it up. And in fact, if the hero is carrying something, they probably should throw it before they interact with anything. So let's go into the interact function. And if carried object is not null, then we want to uh, throw the carried object. Um, so let's just say throw, um, and then we'll create a function called throw. So strictly speaking, um, we're already guarding against the carried object being null, but I'm still going to put in uh, if carried object is not null, just in case we want to call throw from somewhere else. What we're going to do here is we're going to assume that any object that you can carry has a, uh, let's call it thrown, using the same naming scheme as we've been so far. We're going to assume that it has a thrown function, carried object dot thrown. We want to move it a certain number of spaces from where we throw it. Now, you might be tempted to think, uh, let's set the velocity and use move and slide, but that is not something you can do with a static body. So instead, what we're going to do is we are going to use a tween. As of Godot 3.5, which is what I'm using here, you don't actually have to create a tween node. You can just uh, create a tweener in the code. So we're going to say var tween equals create tween. Uh, now what a tween is, is it's something that lets you interpolate uh, a property between two values over a set period of time. This is very similar to what an animation player does. The main difference is that with animation players, the values you're interpolating are static and fixed. And with the tween, you can interpolate between values that might be stored in variables and can change. Animation players are good for when you have absolute things to animate and uh, tweeners are good for when you're animating things where the values are relative to other things in your scene. This particular tween is going to interpolate the position of the thrown object. Tween dot tween property. Um, the object that we're tweening is the carried object. The property is the position. The final value is going to be the hero's position. And in this case, we do not want to use the position of the sprite. We specifically want the position of the hero. And we're going to add to the hero's position the facing vector times uh, 16 times, let's say, 5. Uh, so the hero will throw the pot 5 tiles. And then this will happen over a duration of, let's say, 0.5 seconds. And finally, of course, we just threw the object, so it's no longer being carried. Carried object equals null. Now let's go over to the pot side of things. Um, we're going to need to create a thrown function. Of course, the hero is handling all the motion for the pot. With our thrown function, really, we just need to handle the vertical 
uh, part of the animation. And of course, we have an animator specifically for this. So let's create a new animation, and we're going to call it Throne. And I think what we're going to do with this animation is, if we look at picked up, the, the picked up position is minus 12. So that's probably where we want to start for Throne, unless we're throwing it in the air, of course, in which case, well, I think we should probably just disallow that. That's the easiest way to take care of that. Throne is, of course, going to take 0.5 seconds, and we're going to just be animating the sprite here. The collision box is not going to change. Add this. Uh, it starts at 12, so when you throw something, probably it goes up in the air for a little bit. Um, so let's go up to, say, negative 24. It'll stay in the air for a bit. Let's do 0.2 seconds in the air at negative 24. And then eventually, of course, it will come back down to the ground at zero. And if we look at that animation, that does not look realistic at all. Uh, we also want to do cubic interpolation so that there's more of a curve to it. Okay, that seems reasonable. So when it's thrown, we will do carry animator dot play thrown. Also, uh, one other thing that we need to do for the throne animation is at the end of the animation, we need to return the pot to its original collision layers. So we'll just add a collision layer track, uh, move this to the end of the animation, and that will set it back to the obstacles and interactables layer. All right, let's try this out. So we pick up the pot and we immediately throw it. And this makes sense because if we go and look at the controller, basically every physics frame, we're checking whether the interact key is pressed. And when we press the interact key, if we aren't holding a pot, we pick it up. But then if we are holding a pot, we throw it. I can imagine with other interactions, such as talking with NPCs, it could be very annoying if you talk to them and then you press interact and then you immediately start another conversation. But I think the way that we can solve this is if we have a short cooldown in between the player's ability to interact. So to do this, let's create a variable called can interact. And we're also going to add a timer to the hero. We'll call this the interaction timer. When the interaction timer times out, we will set can interact to true. Um, we're going to have the interaction timer, let's see, what will be a good amount of time? 0.5 seconds again. When you call interact, all we have to do is start the timer. And um, also, we need to set can interact to false. Um, and I suppose we should also probably check whether it's true or not here. So if not can interact, we will um, just return. All right, and here we go. We're holding the pot. Um, we can jump around with the pot and we can throw the pot. And I do notice that the pot seems to um, go a little bit higher than we would like. I, I think I would like it to be in line with the hero, but I think that's probably just a question of um, moving around the sprites. So I'll do that uh, off screen to get them aligned. So there you have it. Uh, we have a pot, it blocks movement and we can pick up and throw it. Next time, we will implement interactions with NPCs um, so that they can give you helpful exposition. Thanks for watching.